Hey, what is up guys? It's Sky, and so I'm starting up a new series. I'll title it Battlefield 1 Flight School, and it's going to cover every topic imaginable. And it's going to be mostly a live commentary series, mostly because video editing is a lot of work. And it's going to be live commentary. I might jump on an empty server, or I might jump in a game and just demonstrate things and talk about things. And I might, you know, put in gameplay clips here and there to demonstrate points, but I kind of don't want to do too much video editing for this series. I want to be able to just get the information out there. So, the first episode is going to cover key bindings. Uh, I'm going to fo focus ma mainly on the PC platform. Uh, I've been flying since BF3, and I flew on the console a lot in BF3. So I'm familiar with the controller, but I definitely prefer the mouse and keyboard for flying with advanced controls. For flying with simplified controls, like in Battlefront, the controller is way better. But for advanced controls, you want keyboard and mouse. It's the ideal configuration. It's even better than using a flight stick. And I'll tell you why uh, later in the video, but for now, let me just keep it simple. I'm going to jump into this uh, empty server playing Sinai, Sinai Desert Conquest uh, British on the British side and let's go right into the controller configuration settings now on console you're gonna have the option of using veteran button layout or default button layout and veteran button layout all the way because you want your throttle separated from your movement controls. You see here in the veteran layout you got your throttle on your triggers and you have your movements on your sticks. If you go to default you're gonna have throttle on the left stick and that's a no-go because you need to have individual control of your movement and your throttle. Veteran layout all the way. Now to be able to throttle down and shoot your cannon at the same time you're gonna have to use a claw grip and I've been using a claw grip when flying since BF3 on PS3 so you, you're gonna want to learn how to use it and as far as your sticks configuration goes you can go either way uh, neither of these are ideal because either way you're gonna have to combine two of your movement controls on the right stick whether you're combining your pitch and your yaw with a legacy configuration or you're combining your roll and your pitch in a default configuration. I'd say for maneuvering I'd rather have roll on the right stick because roll you're gonna use you know fine control minute inputs most of the time whereas pitch you want to max it out. Pitch and yaw you want to max it out if you use legacy configuration you'll never be able to max out either pitch or yaw because they're gonna fight with each other on the right stick now I'll say that for doing strafe runs legacy is better because you can pretty much mimic your your infantry right analog stick like you're doing a strafe run and you push to the right and you know your aim will go to the right so if you're doing a strafe run on the default configuration, you know, you're going to use your left stick to control your aim left and right, and then pitch up and down with the right stick, and then the roll is going to get in the way sometimes. It's a little bit trickier, but I'd say if you're going to learn, go with legacy controls and just try to learn it. You know, like I said, neither of these are ideal, but if you're on console, you don't have a choice. Now, if you're on PC, using a mouse and keyboard which is my preferred method of controls you're gonna be able to bind your pitch yaw and roll to individual individual separate controls and I I even have pitch duplicated on the keyboard and the mouse and most good pilots do this I got my yaw left and right on A and D pitch up and down on SNW as well as the mouse and I got roll bound to the mouse I don't really bother rolling on the keyboard and if you want to get good at flying you're gonna have and you're you're a keyboard roller you're gonna have to get away from that and put it on the mouse because all maneuvers 
stem from your roll, your control of your ailerons. And you need to have fine and very precise control of your ailerons. And of course, the only way to do that is to have it on the mouse. And the mouse even beats out a joystick, an old school joystick, because you're never going to be as precise with a joystick as you are going to be with a mouse. Now, the good thing about there's no disadvantages to having a roll on the mouse because you're almost never going to max out. You know, you're almost never going to have to max your roll input. You're always going to have to find finally control it. So it's perfect for the mouse. Now, as far as pitch and yaw goes, you just want to max that out. So that's perfect for the keyboard, and even beats out old school flight sticks because you're never going to be able to go from yaw left 100% to yaw right 100% as quickly on on a flight stick or joystick as you can on the keyboard you know it's just a press of a press of a key on the keyboard so with that out of the way uh, I have chase camera bound to my thumb button and that's really important you need to be able to access that quickly and my key bindings have have one thing one purpose and that's to be able to keep my in my three left three fingers on my left hand bound to the movement keys and almost never take them off ever actually my key bindings make it so that I never have to take the three fingers on my left hand off of my movement keys and that's really important uh, right mouse button is bound to zoom I used to have afterburners bound to the right mouse button actually uh, if you remember in BF3 and BF4 the stealth jet had afterburners and it was really important to have fine control of the afterburners you had to click it at a very specific rhythm and timing and I felt that having it on the right, having it on the right mouse button was perfect but of course in BF1 there's no afterburners so you know zooms bounce to the right mouse, right mouse button and I didn't really feel any need to change that free look bound to alt And again, you know, I can free look without having to take my fingers off the movement keys. And also, I can free look without having to take my finger off the throttle key. Because there's only one time I free look, and that's when I'm pulling out a strafe, gaining elevation, moving away from the battlefield, and I want to be able to see what's going on behind me. So I pull up out of the strafe, gain elevation and jam my throttle and I can free look with the alt key while jamming the throttle excuse me uh, my throttle down or my brake is bound to the space bar and I've always had that bound to the space bar and BF3 and BF4 the brake was extremely important in maintaining your 313 speed control now speed control is a little different in BF1 it's still there uh, I've heard I've heard some youtubers say that it's not there anymore but it's it's there but uh, I'm going to have to experiment with it a little more and get back to you on the best way to take advantage of it but most of the time you're only going to use your brakes for strafe runs and if you're in like a basically a straight like uh, a straight dive toward the ground then you're going to need to use your brakes or else you're going to gain way too much airspeed and you're not going to be able to maneuver to, to pull out of it but save that for another video. Uh, of course, I have the guns bound to the left mouse button. Didn't change that. Reload. Uh, I have switch weapon bound to my middle mouse button. And I'll show you how useful that is really soon. Gadget 1 bound to control. Now, it's going to be your spot flares, your speed boost, or your emergency repairs. I have that bound to control because once again I can easily access it without moving my three fingers on my left hand off the movement keys. Self repair bound to X, I can hit that with my thumb. Of course, when you're repairing, you can't control your plane, so uh, we got full map bound to tab. And I figure, you know, score I don't really need to look at the scoreboard, but sometimes I need to be able to quickly access the, the map. So had that bound the tab and that about does it for my key bindings and I'm going to show you a couple more things that you should be tweaking in the options now if you go to video I think 
and console players may or may not have this feature but the third person field of view needs to be maxed and basically at max at, at the max setting the it will give you the the widest field of view while you're in third person and that's important because there's no more air radar you need to be able to just use your your, own, your peripheries to be able to spot enemy planes and dogfights so you need to max this out and uh, there's one more setting that I wanted to talk about I think that's in gameplay advance the plane chase camera roll now if you if you flew in BF3 this was not an option they added this kind of halfway into BF4 and basically uh, this this changes the orientation of your third person camera if you turn this off the camera doesn't roll with you basically it maintains it maintains its orientation vertically so this used to be pretty good in the past like I would turn I would turn this off and be at four but I found that it, ha it has a little bit of a lag say for instance when you turn around and I might be able to demonstrate this so if I spawn into an attack plane and switch to third person and you see when you do barrel rolls the camera doesn't roll with you but I found that say I combo this into a split S and the camera kind of lags uh, didn't really demonstrate it that well but let me try this again see I'm uh, trying to turn around here the camera kind of lags now let's say I turn it on now the camera is gonna roll with you and there's no delay you're gonna be able to see everything oh wait did this guy jump in with me okay uh, well he didn't. jumped in the server with me but it didn't last very long but you know that's what these uh, empty servers are here for for you to practice so you guys should be taking advantage of it too but again if you turn the plane chase camera roll on the camera is going to follow you so when you roll it's going to roll with you and I think that this is the setting to use in BF1 because again there's no air radar so if the camera is lagging then you're losing time in a dogfight and I know a lot of BF3 veterans prefer to turn this camera roll off but and even I preferred it in BF4. I preferred to have the camera roll off because, you know, it was just more relaxing, e easier to keep your bearings. But again, there's no more air radar, so you need the camera. You need the camera to not lag. So again, plane chase camera roll, turn it on, and. That about does it. Actually, since I jumped into this NB server, I take the time to demonstrate one more thing, and that's the reason why keyboard and mouse is superior to other controller options on the PC platform. And it's superior to the controller, it's superior to the flight sticks, because you need to be able to max out your pitch and yaw. You're gonna use max input for these movements. So, say for instance, you want to go from pitch y'all left to y'all right. You can do it at the press of a button instead of having to instead of having to move your analog stick or your joystick from one side to the other. It's just the press of a button. In addition to that, having your ailerons bound to the mouse. Now, for creating maneuvers it's all about having fine control of your ailerons your roll because you can go from say a, a quick snap roll 
to a wider barrel roll and you might you can even combo it so you know you want a snap roll and then go into a wide barrel roll to try to force an overshoot and combo it into other things like a snap roll into a split S so so basically if you want to learn a controller configuration you're pretty much gonna want to learn it the right way the first time because if you if you learn something else and then you try to switch later it's gonna be even more difficult and that's not to say that you can't be successful with other controller configurations but if you want to learn learn it this way and you'll be better off in the future but if, if you're already if you're already kind of a veteran pilot and you're kind of used to a control scheme then you might be hesitant to switch but give it a try and it'll take, it'll take a couple days maybe take a couple weeks or maybe take a couple months but this is really the better way to do it so that about does it uh, I'll catch you guys later thanks for watching